welcome back to my channel today what we'll be doing is we'll be replacing the brake pads on a Toyota Prado the Land Cruiser first we need our jack and we need our bars to wind up the jack we'll look exactly where the jack can be mounted so because I'll be working on the wheels I'll be jacking in up on the lower control arm right here So this actually doesn't have a split pin, there's supposed to be a split pin there that keeps this rod in place as you can see it's moved out but that one's flush with its split pin. So we'll be removing these pins and then the assembly should come off as a unit. As you can see there's clearly a difference in the two which is the clips so this would be a set an opposite clip as you can see that is what basically came out of there and this will then be the other side so if you look at these little plates or clips that you have here so if you take a look at this new pad now right you will see that this little plate that's bending to this formation is actually the scratch plate or the noise plate which once your material wears down and it comes to the stage where this plate will be making contact with your rotor it'll make a very disgusting screeching sound which would sound something 
something like that or similar but just obviously intensified much more since the car will be traveling much faster and that will be the indication that as you can see here these ones I haven't touched yet but it was almost there so we replaced it before that but that is the sound it would make and that will indicate that you need to replace your pads since this car doesn't have any lights indicating on the dash that you should change your pads it has these little screech plates one thing you should also do is just to pop your cap slightly open even just like at a little angle so it can breathe so that one you push the pods backwards so that you can make space for the new pads to come in that that extra fluid will then be pushed up into the brake system and go back into the reservoir the reservoir was laying between maximum and minimum and it is now slightly above maximum and that would be taken away once we pressurize the system again to get these pads to touch onto the rotor itself next I'll be showing you guys how to install how to install the little retainer clips it's not really a retainer clip but just like a pressure clip since the rods actually retain them so I'll be showing you how to install that and then we'll be putting in the split pins so what we'll be doing here is the one with the single scrape plate goes on the outside and the one with the double goes on the inside um, we'll be inserting the first pin here goes in like that <clears throat> then we'll be putting on these plates so the plate goes in there like that and just pull this one back like that so you can see goes into the second pad and then we're just gonna lock it lightly into place now that will sit like that I would suggest every time you change your pads to also change your split pin That is it. Everything's back together, assembled. You put that little lock in there, the split pin, and your front pads is replaced. Okay guys, so this is more your typical type brake setup, which you have your cradle, which is attached to the vehicle itself, that is stationary, and then you've got the floating um, 
pot right which is your hydraulic system that comes into here and then the two pots sit behind these or below these points and this will actually squeeze and push the pots pots will push out from this way and this floating mechanism will then squeeze in the opposite direction squeezing this side's pad to the rotor and the pots squeezing this side pad to the rotor as well so these things are extremely hard to crack loose but once it's loose it's extremely easy to remove releasing the pot there you can see there's the pot and like I explained to you the pot will push and this will push that way to clamp both of the pads and now it's extremely easy to remove these pads they just clip into place And just the same on the other side. Should your pads wear unevenly that you get usually your outer side to wear more than your inner side then it is most likely due to this it's almost always due to this where this is seized up or corroded and it's not traveling anymore or the grease has dried out so this would not travel and it'll get stuck in a position with whether you push it with the pot and it's stuck in in that position you'll get the outer pad that will be wearing constantly because it's constantly rubbing against your um, rotor all right so let's have a look these are the new brake pads so here you can actually see this one's worn quite a bit original or the new one now there's some things you need to look at here that some hardware you need to transfer one is this backing plate which clips on and the other one is this contact right and then make sure whichever way you're gonna put it in that it is at the top so I would want to be placing mine on here And then how this works to insert it is you insert it at an angle facing inwards so that you get onto these plates first and then in and then into the channel so first onto the press plates onto the lips and then into the guide so you put it in press it forward and it'll slide into place and that is it now what we'll be doing is the pot will push that back as far as it can go so it can slide over so I'll need both hands to do this so I'll video shortly so I'm going to show you an easy way to retract the pot and that is insert one brake, brake pad, put the holder back into place, insert the studs, and 
Okay, we'll leave it like that. So we'll be taking this off. And then it's very simple. And then it's very simple. You can see the pot right there. So you'll just insert something and wedge it. And as you can see, it's being retracted fully. There you can see, that's a big space now. So we'll be putting this back on, then we'll release the two pins again. We'll put the other pad in, and then we will tighten up the assembly. I'll be cleaning these and I'll be giving them some anti-seize just so it functions much better. So there you will see it's actually extremely snug, there's not a lot of play. So you need to retract the pot fully. So all that I'm doing is when you put this back, you need to press these into place. Because the bolt goes through them. So these ones you need to make quite tight. So that is basically it for the rear. I'll just be tightening these some more. I'll be tightening these as well just to make every, sure everything is tightened down. And then I'll do the same that I did with the front rim, which is put anti-seize on the inner side of the rim where it makes contact with the rotor and then that's for the rear brakes, that's done.